It's a busy Tuesday. Three big stories to follow this afternoon, including Vice President Kamala Harris just wrapping up a campaign speech in Denver this afternoon. And then there's Colorado Congressman Ken Buck announcing that he's leaving Congress sooner than expected. We'll take a deep dive into what this means as far as replacing him and how it could shape the future of that seat and Congress itself. But we begin with the weather. It's, you know, it's coming. It's gorgeous right now. Everybody's saying, no, it can't be that bad. It's March in Colorado. In a couple of days, the foothills could be measuring snow by the foot. We want to get right to Kathy Sabin for what you know right now. That's right, big change is coming. We're due, and this could be the biggest storm that Colorado's seen in about three years. Forecast models have this storm coming together over the Four Corners area, sliding into southeastern Colorado, which would produce some deep upslope for us. And it's hard to imagine that when you have two days with sunshine and 60s, but we go under a winter storm warning tomorrow night for heavy wet snow that will continue through Friday morning. And this means major travel impacts, school closures and business closures. Temperatures this afternoon running above average. We have 60 in Denver, almost 70 in Lamar. This is the main system coming into the Pacific Northwest. It's going to dive down into the Four Corners area. It's going to come in two pieces. One wave will generate more snow than we're seeing on the radar now. The second main core system comes rolling in Wednesday night into Thursday. Denver under a winter storm warning for 9 to 18 inches of snow. Winter weather advisories cover the higher terrain areas, but the other big story is the foothill areas west of I-25 above 6,500 feet. We could be looking at upwards of 30 inches of snow. Wet heavy snow that could bring down power lines and tree limbs. We're seeing isolated showers overnight tonight. Mountain snow ramps up. No issues for your drive tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, scattered rain showers mixed with snow tomorrow night. The snow turns heavy overnight through Thursday morning, all day Thursday, and continues into Thursday evening before the whole system moves out of here. And so some of the snow totals in this bullseye area in hot pink from Estes Park, Allens Park, Black Hawk down to Georgetown and Evergreen, 18 to 30 inches of snow. Much more on the timing and the impacts coming up in Maine weather in just a bit. Hey, thank you, Kathy. We've been warned. Here's a live look at the U.S. Capitol right now. Surprise announcement today from Congressman Ken Buck. The Colorado Republican says he is leaving Congress in 10 days. Of course, it was back in November. He said he wouldn't seek re-election, but now suddenly he's leaving early. So 9 News anchor Kyle Clark joins us now because it's great to have some turbulence finally in CD4. <laughs> uh, but there are a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Here. This affects things nationally and certainly here in the state. Do we know really what happened or why now as far as Ken Buck? I don't know if either of you have ever considered quitting your job, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I never crossed the people my who mind. do oh. often quit because they hate it at work. And I think Ken Buck's been pretty clear that he doesn't like being in Congress. He thinks that it's dysfunctional. He disagrees with a lot of the Republican leadership. He was on the losing end of some votes within his caucus. He wasn't going to run for re-election in November. And now he's like, you know what? I'm going to give you 10 days notice and I'm going to peace out of here. This is unusual. No, no Colorado member of the U.S. House has resigned in modern political memory. So now we head to this special election. But yeah, honestly, exactly. I'd encourage people to just kind of set that thought to the side and focus on the Republican primary to replace him. That's the race, okay? That's the race that everybody knows about, that Lauren Boebert has come across the state to run in, that Jerry Sonnenberg and Deb Flora and Richard Holtorf, all these other people are in, because that's the race that will determine who takes the seat, not this special election to figure out who sits in it for a couple of months. And that's at the end of June. Yes. It's going to happen on the same day as the primary. So it's not even like whoever gets picked in this special election is going to be able to say, well, I'm the incumbent. I'm in Congress. Because it's going to happen simultaneously with the Republican primary. And in that heavy, deep red district, whoever wins that Republican primary is almost certainly going to Congress. So voters are going to have to really be aware, or this is going to be so confusing. But even if Ken Buck was really unhappy as a congressman, mm -hmm. This seems like this was strategic. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that Ken Buck does things by accident, all right? <laughs> I think that if there's going to be any impact of this, there is going to be voter confusion. Because right. either in two ballots or in one mega ballot, they're going to have two races together. If you're a Republican or an unaffiliated voter in CD4 on the Eastern Plains, Douglas County, Loveland. And they're going to have to sort through which is the special election for a couple of months and then which is the GOP primary. And here's the thing to watch. 
whoever is the Republican in that special election, which will be picked by party insiders, not by voters, that person does get a little bit of a gold star right next to their name, yeah. right? You're going to see their name twice as opposed to all the other Republicans once. And I haven't talked to anybody who thinks that Lauren Boebert is going to be the pick of the party insiders. So could this hurt Boebert? Yeah, there's a chance. Does it help her? Absolutely not. And you always wait for the, the fingerprint of Donald Trump you know, sure. as far as Republican politics presently. And he may say Lauren Boebert should be the pick. And that would have an impact even in CD4? You know, I don't know. We're not talking about that many people. And we're talking about party insiders. These are the folks who have spent years building up the Republican Party on the Eastern Plains. There's a lot of indications that they are the folks who are least interested in Lauren Boebert packing her bags and moving over the continental divide. Again, they'll pick the person for the special election. GOP voters and unaffiliated pick the candidate to advance in November. Well, we should probably talk about this at 5 o'clock, and maybe you should touch on it during next at 6. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to do that, but now that you bring it up, yes, I will. I'll, I'll put it right up at the top. Just okay. drop it in there and see if we can give us something. It's good to see you. Thanks good for see dropping you. in, Kyle. Vice President Kamala Harris just wrapped up a campaign speech in Denver about 20 minutes ago. She was here as part of a four-state trip after President Biden's State of the Union address. Harris spoke about issues like gun violence, abortion access, and the border. We'll hear from the Vice President coming up at 5 o'clock. Well, it happened again. The second time in the last 24 hours, a car crashed into Cherry Creek in Denver. Take a live look here at 8th and Spear, this near Denver Health, where firefighters and a tow truck just, just removed the car. Still not understood exactly what happened or if anyone was hurt. The car crashed on the opposite side of the creek where the bike path runs, and we'll still try to get more information from Denver Fire as to what happened. Now, the first one happened last night, not too far away. at Spear and Downing, the car going through a fence and landing on the bike path. That one, we still don't know if anyone was hurt or what exactly happened there either. Tomorrow, a federal judge will hear arguments on whether evidence tested by a DNA analyst under investigation should be overturned. CBI says Yvonne Missy Woods manipulated data on hundreds of cases. And there's a man who's been in prison now for 22 years for sexual assault. He says it's an assault that he didn't commit. Nine News Crime and Justice reporter Kelly Ranke talked with his attorney ahead of the hearing. Kelly? Yeah, hey, Kim and Tom. James Hunter's attorney planned to file a lawsuit before CBI announced its investigation into Missy Woods. He says the findings from the agency, though, uh, so far validate their suspicions. DNA tested by an analyst at CBI two decades ago helped convict a man for sexual assault. James Hunter, who's now 64 years old and still in prison, says the evidence was fabricated. Just as we're about ready to file, then this Missy Woods thing came up and they go, makes total sense. Days before filing the lawsuit, Hunter's attorney learned CBI was investigating the lead scientist in their case. Wednesday, he'll ask a federal judge to give them access to the evidence so it can be retested. And so any case she touched is in question now. According to the lawsuit, Hunter was convicted after Woods analyzed the DNA. Mark Burden believes there needs to be more testing. We have a lab all ready to go. He planned to sue before learning about the investigation into Woods' work. But he says learning the agency found she manipulated data in hundreds of cases helps. It gives a lot of weight to our argument. It certainly shows we're not barking up the wrong tree. He'll make his argument in federal court Wednesday for a man he feels is one of the cases impacted by CBI's review. I don't really have a question. I'm certain it's part of this. The review did not find Woods falsified DNA matches or fabricated profiles. CBI says Woods tampered with evidence and impacted 652 cases from 2008 to 2023. A review for cases that date back to 1994 is still happening. Of course, Kelly, the fear is that this might be the tip of the iceberg, that there may be many more of these cases that need re-examination or will, people will be looking for re-examination. We just don't know. A defense attorneys say they need a lot more information to find out if their clients' cases are a part of this review. But at this time, we just have numbers. We don't have case numbers. Thanks, Kelly. Inflation jumped 3.2% in February over last year. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, that's slightly higher than expected. The biggest hurdle into lowering inflation is housing. Those costs jumped in February by 5.7%. The higher than expected figures mean the feds could push back the plans to lower interest rates. It's National Sleep Awareness Week. It really should be Always a big week for every me. week. But but <laughs> it's tied to, you know, daylight saving time. And Steve on your side is helping us all get better rest. Of course, one thing you won't be short of is all the products out there that claim with one dose you'll be dozing right off. But our consumer investigator, Steve Steger, now has a look into the sleep supplements and drugs that do promise to be a dream come true. 
We have all been there after a rough night of sleep. Facing the next day is not fun. The truth is, not sleeping enough isn't just annoying. It can actually contribute to serious health problems, including diabetes, high blood pressure, weight gain, and depression. For decades, many people have turned to over-the-counter sleep drugs, but they can leave you feeling drowsy the next day. And prescription sleep medications, even the newer ones, come with additional risks. Some have also been linked to sleepwalking and other odd nighttime behaviors. So you should take the lowest dose for the shortest time possible. One option is CBD. It's shown to have mild side effects and is not addictive. If you suffer from chronic insomnia, before you turn to CBD, it's actually time to make an appointment with your physician. He or she can help you with a more proven therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps focus on behaviors that can improve your sleep. And what about melatonin? Consumer Reports tells Steve on your side it might be a good option for people who work night shifts or are jet lagged, but taking more than your body produces can cause you to be sleepy or mentally or physically slow the next day. Start with a dose between 0.2 and 0.5 milligrams and never take a dose higher than 10 milligrams. If you still want to give CBD a try, talk with your doctor, especially if you take other medications because CBD may interact with them. And if you have a consumer problem you want us to look into, send us an email. The address is right there on your screen. I'm Steve Steger, Steve on your side, 9 News.